Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. Today, one day after the Arizona Supreme Court upheld a 160-year-old law outlawing nearly all abortions, Republicans in that state's legislature threw away a chance to repeal the wildly unpopular ban. Arizona Democrats, who are a slim minority, just barely, in the Senate, tried to bring up legislation that would repeal the 1864 law, and in some sense is calling the bluff of Republicans who said, oh, this is terrible. And yet what happened? Republican leaders in the State House removed the bill from the agenda. In the House, Republicans called for a recess before any votes could be cast on a similar bill. Democrats quickly reproached their Republican colleagues on the floor. Arizona is now set to be ground zero in what will be the first true nationwide abortion election in this nation's history. It's the product of 50 years of anti-abortion activism by the Republican Party and conservatives. For half a century, Republicans have kind of argued out of both sides of their mouths about reproductive rights. This is important to understand. So in one side, right, they, they called abortion murder, your, your baby killers, and they claim that fertilized eggs are full human persons. At the same time, they claim that their real objection to the right to an abortion, as enshrined in the Supreme Court's decision, Roe v. Wade, was that it prevented Americans from voting on the issue. They said it should be left to the states and to the democratic process. Well, thanks to the successful efforts of the Republican anti-abortion movement and Donald Trump and his conservative majority on the Supreme Court, abortion rights have been kicked back to the states. The right to safe and legal reproductive care is now up in the air in every state in the nation. Since the Supreme Court's decision overturning Roe, abortion rights have been explicitly on the ballot in statewide referenda or initiatives in six states. And in every single one, the pro-abortion rights side won. Even conservative states, states that Donald Trump won, like Kansas and Kentucky and Ohio, where Republicans pulled out every trick in the book to stop it from even getting on the ballot. Arizona now will have this on the ballot in the fall. It's expected to be next, along with several others, including Florida. And of course, now this year, for the first time since the Supreme Court overturned Roe, we are facing a national presidential election. On one side, we have the man who, you know, nearly single-handedly <laughs> destroyed Roe v. Wade, as he will be the absolute first to tell you. I was proudly the person responsible for the ending of something that all legal scholars, both sides, wanted and, in fact, demanded be ended. Roe v. Wade. For 54 years, they were trying to get Roe v. Wade terminated, and I did it, and I'm proud to have done it. Roe v. Wade, I, I did something that nobody thought was possible, and Roe v. Wade was terminated, was put back to the states. Point of fact there, uh, not all legal scholars on both sides wanted Roe v. Wade overturned. That's nonsense. Now, on the other side of this election, there's a Democratic president, Joe Biden, who promises explicitly to restore Roe v. Wade as the law of the land through legislation if he's able to work with the Democratic House and Senate. The thing about all this is, and it's really wild to watch this, I got to say, I, I don't think I've ever quite seen something like this in my 20 years covering American politics. Republicans, at least the ones with like a modicum of sense, understand they are in desperate trouble on this issue. It is just clear as day that voters are not in line with their position on abortion. So they're just running around saying anything they can to anyone, just <laughs> trying to, like, run away from themselves, from their own position. I mean, Donald Trump is the prime example. In a recent statement, desperately trying to create some distance from the political catastrophe of his own making that he keeps bragging about, he said he supported leaving abortion rights up to the states. Of course, that includes states like Mississippi, where a 13-year-old who's the victim of rape has to give birth to her rapist child. And this comes after spent, Trump spent years just flip-flopping all over the place on the issue. Well, look, I'm, I'm very pro-choice. I am strongly for choice, and yet I hate the concept of abortion. But you would not ban it? No. I used to not be pro-life. I'd become pro-life. I build buildings. They're not asking me about am I pro-choice? Am I pro-life? What am I? But 
Yeah, uh, when, I don't use the word flip. I've evolved on a lot of different things. I mean, I'm, as you know, I'm pro-life. I have been pro-life. The answer is that there has to be some form of punishment. For the woman? Yeah, there has to be some form. Again, pick any position. He said it at some point. None of that matters. It doesn't matter what he says. Remember, Republicans are trying to hide their true position. And the ones that are trying to hide their position, like Trump, those are the ones who know that they need to actually win an election. But if you listen to conservatives who don't need to win votes, well, then they sound like this. If you had to travel to another state to get an abortion, it's not the worst thing in the world. Hopefully, this is a very rare occurrence in your life. Once in your life, maybe you would do it. Uh, buying a bus ticket to go somewhere to get it is not the worst thing in the world. Come on, cheer up, toots. It's just a bus ticket. Just a bus ticket. Just get on a bus. 15 years old, victim of sexual assault. Get on a bus. Figure it out. Maybe this happens once and most twice. That's what they think. Remember, no matter what Donald Trump or anyone else says, this Republican Party is devoted to completely eliminating bodily autonomy for all American women as a matter of fervent, zealous belief. And they will not stop until they are definitively politically defeated over and over and over until it's ground out of them. And believe me, they have the tools to accomplish this robbing women of their full bodily autonomy at every level. They have it in the judiciary, in state judiciaries, federal judiciary, in state legislatures, in governor's mansions. And if they win the presidency this November, they will control a federal government that they can, for instance, order the FDA to overturn the approval of abortion medication like mefepristone, take it off the shelves. They can revive another 19th century law still on the books, which is basically just like fallen into disrepute and not used, called the Comstock Act, which, and I quote it here, outlaws mailing, quote, every article or thing designed, adapted, or intended for producing abortion. That would mean the federal mail would shut down all the shipping of anything related to abortion. How do you think that would work? What do you think that would do? And you may be saying, well, it sounds a little far-fetched to just thaw out a dormant law from the 1800s to attack abortion rights, but that's exactly what they literally just did in the Arizona Supreme Court yesterday. So we are now seeing the spectacle of Arizona Republicans running for office, twisting themselves into knots. Take, for instance, this candidate. You know her, Carrie Lake. She lost the race for governor to Katie Hobbs in 2022, though she never conceded. She is now running for Senate against Democratic Congressman Ruben Gallego. Yesterday, in the wake of that disastrous Arizona Supreme Court decision, she put out this statement, desperately trying to run away from what she knows is the wrong side of the issue. She can read a poll. Quote, I oppose today's ruling. I'm calling on Katie Hobbs. That's a, that's a funny one. Oh, I guess Katie Hobbs is the governor now? So you're not the governor? I'm calling on Katie Hobbs and the state, state legislature to come up with an immediate common sense solution Arizonans can support. Of course, her party blocked that today. And that statement, which was fine, as these statements go, would be slightly more credible if Carrie Lake hadn't explicitly endorsed the very same 1864 law on stage into a microphone on camera just two years ago. Obviously, I think Roe v. Wade should be overturned. And I think the Supreme Court, I have a good feeling that they're going to do the right thing this time. We have a great law in the books right now. If that happens, uh, we will be a state where we will not be taking the lives of our unborn anymore. We have a great law on the books right now. So this is what the abortion election looks like, okay? As election day approaches, Republicans like Carrie Lake will continue to lie about their own positions because they understand how toxic they are. But make no mistake, they have already shown us and continue to show us every day what they do when they have power. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it. 